before, love comes in every form. But have you ever taken it for granted and didn't think about it twice? Well, in this case, this person did, and they led her down the dark and humble path that no one deserves to go down. But well, we'll learn. It happened, and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. For Kimberly, love wasn't hard to get. She was one of the lucky ones who had the gift of having it. Her parents loved her more than anything, and even her crush loved her back. Kimberly had it all, the one thing most would kill for, but she didn't pay much attention to it. The day began, Kimberly was still sound asleep when she was awoken by her mom. Sweetie, wake up, it's time to get ready for school. Kimberly sat up and said, all right, she didn't even say good morning or a thank you to her mom. The weekend was here and Kimberly had plans to go out with her friend. Kimberly began to get dressed for the day and then walked downstairs to eat breakfast. Once downstairs, she was greeted by her dad and she did the exact same thing. She only said hi, nothing else. Kimberly sat at the table and was on her phone the whole time waiting to get served. Her dad said, Kim, baby, today is your mom's celebration at her work for being the first doctor to find a cure for arthritis. Kimberly said, congrats, mom. Your mom would love it if you attend the celebration. She's getting a huge raise, said her dad. Actually, I already have plans tonight with the girls. We're going to go out to Jessica's party. You'd rather spend time with your friends than go to your mom's celebration, said her dad. Kimberly replied, no offense, but there's only going to be a doctor. I'm going to be the only young one. And it's gonna get boring. Her dad was about to give her a long lecture, but her mom said, Dan, hun, it's okay. She has a point. Just let her go with her friends. She's still young. But hun, said her dad. No, it's okay. Trust me, said her mom. Kimberly, now that she had permission to go, sent a thumbs up to her friends and began to eat. Once everyone was done, they got into the car and began their ride to Kimberly School. Both her parents took her today as her dad asked for his day off because of the celebration. When they got to the school, once again, her dad tried to give her a small lecture, but Kimberly said, I don't have time for this, and got off the car. Dan said, Sophie, hun, we're losing her to her friends. Sophie replied, hun, don't overthink it too much. She's just a teenager. We were once teens too, remember? Yeah, I remember, but times were different back then compared to now, responded Dan. They pulled out the drop-off zone and began headed back home. While that was going on, Kimberly met up with her friends to talk about the party later that night. And it wasn't long after the bell rang, class began, and that was also the same class where her crush Devin was also in. And she knew that he also liked her, but she kept playing the hard to get game, which just was another way of giving wrong signals. And of course, wrong signals were picked up and the guys just gave up completely. Devin tried to talk to her, but she gave him the start an interesting conversation but he picked up the go fuck yourself sign and stopped kimberly instead of making it easy for both of them she made it harder ultimately leading to devin to give up that very same day but kimberly did not notice that she thought he'd come back again during that same class the group chat she was in was just on fire on everyone was mad texting each other about the party it got to the point where kimberly had to put her phone on mute to avoid getting in trouble and potentially losing permission to go for not paying attention. When first period ended and the second period began, her fate had settled in. There was no going back. Kimberly got a text from her mom saying that they were going to be a little late to pick her up to which Kimberly replied, okay and? Her mom responded, no nothing, I was just letting you know. Sorry to have bothered you and Kimberly left her on red. Kimberly didn't hate her parents, she just took them for granted the same way she took Devin for granted. The teacher passed out a small quiz with 10 multiple choice questions that would determine the grades for the semester, but Kimberly had other plans on passing. Kimberly cheated on the quiz so she could keep getting what she wanted and she did not get caught. To make a long school day short, for the remaining of the school day, it was rinse, cycle, and repeat. Kimberly cheated on a few things and ignored guys to prove that she was loyal. When the time came to go home, Kimberly met with her friends, Iris and Hannah, and all they talked about was that stupid party. So at what time are we gonna pick you up, asked Hannah, to which Kimberly replied 5pm just so we could spend more time together. Agreed, responded Iris. Iris and Hannah said their goodbyes and Kimberly had to stay a few extra minutes as her mom was going to be late. Her mom arrived 20 minutes later and Kimberly got in the car. Sophie asked, at what time are you getting picked up? 
At five, we're going to get there early to spend more time together, said Kimberly. Upon hearing this, it did hurt Sophie a bit as her daughter preferred friends over family and began to think that Dan was right, they were losing her. Upon arriving at home, Kimberly ran to her room to get her clothing and went to take a shower. When she was taking the shower, Sophie told Dan, Hun, you were right. I asked him at what time they were going to pick her up and she said five because she wanted to spend more time with her friends. We're losing her. Dan replied, that's it, tonight's her last time going out with friends, but after tonight it's going to be nothing but family, quality time, agreed and responded Sophie. Dan and Sophie were going to regain their only child back from her friends, no more of that, I don't have time for this bullshit. When Kimberly stepped out of the shower, Dan and Sophie confronted her. Dan said, Kim baby, we're going to talk now, in a serious tone, Kimberly said okay and sat on her bed. Sophie proceeded to say, Kim, your father and I have talked about this and we've made up our minds. After tonight, you will not be hanging out with your friends. It's time you give family a turn, said Dan. Kimberly rolled her eyes and replied, Oh my God, will you two give it a break? You are not losing me. You know I love you. And then act like it, responded Dan with an angry tone to see if it would work. And it didn't. Kimberly began to throw a fit and ended up with her saying, Ugh, I hate you guys and stormed out of the house. Sophie began to tear up as they had officially lost her. Dan said, come on, hun, don't cry. We have a celebration to go to. Kimberly picked up by... Kimberly got picked up by Hannah as she had her license, but from the moment she got in the car, Hannah knew something was off and asked, are you okay, Kim? Kimberly replied, if I'm being honest, no. Hannah asked, why, how come? Kimberly responded, my parents think they're losing me to you guys because I hang out too much with you guys. Hannah said, if you want to prove them wrong, just spend time with them. Kimberly replied, you're right, but they told me this was my last night hanging out with you guys. Hannah responded, that's good. Show them that you do love them. Kimberly said, yeah, I will, and cheered up and lost the bad mood. She was in and they headed to go pick up Iris from her house. While that was happening, Kimberly's parents were on their way to the celebration. After picking up Iris, it was party time. They began to blast music on the way there and they had a karaoke by themselves. The drive was 30 minutes and they were some of the few that got there early. Kimberly's parents arrived at the celebration and they were the first ones as Sophie had to be there early to greet everyone as they came in. The day slowly became night and the party began to get wild. More and more kids began pulling up and sooner or later some were getting high and others high on cloud nine. Kimberly was having a blast with her friends and began meeting new people. Back at the celebration, Sophie was called up to give her speech, but first she thanked her husband for supporting her and she also thanked her daughter for motivating her to do better. And it finally paid off. Sophie cried and shook a lot of hands and was awarded and awarded a raise and got promoted. The night was going well for both parties. Time began to tick for Kimberly curfew was coming but since it was going to be her last night out with her friends she chose to stay out longer at the party while that was going on kimberly's parents were on their way home from the celebration dan was driving the car and he said i'm so proud of you love sophie smiled and said thanks babe and went to kiss him on the cheek but that's where it all happened and they went wrong babe watch out screamed sophie and out of instinct dan slammed on the brakes and they hit another car the time hit 11 p.m. and the girls began their journey back home. They were having a blast on the car ride back and it was like that for 20 minutes until Hannah said, oh, what happened over there? As Kimberly looked, she yelled, that's my parents' car, stop the car. Kimberly ran to check on the accident but was stopped by police. Kimberly said, that's my parents' car. The officer took off his hat and said, I am truly sorry. What? replied Kimberly. And that's when she saw both her dad and mom being put in body bags. They were officially dead. Kimberly began to ask, what happened? Please tell me. The officer said, a witness saw the accident happen. The other driver was involved and was intoxicated and he too passed away. Kimberly asked, what was the name of the driver? The officer replied, Devin Peters. And in that moment, Kimberly began to stumble. She felt as if she couldn't breathe. Everything began to spin. The officer grabbed her and sat her down. Kimberly burst into tears. She had lost her parents and her crush. All in one night, Hannah and Iris felt bad for Kimberly, that just seeing her crying made them cry too. 
From that moment forward, time felt slow. Everything felt unreal to Kimberly, and that's when she regretted not spending time with them. She had taken them for granted, and she had done the same to Devin, so you can't imagine the pain Kimberly was going through. Eventually, Kimberly was taken in by Hannah's parents to live with them, as Hannah was also a single child, but that night, Kimberly lost herself. The night was having a bad effect on Kimberly because she began to think dark thoughts and it got bad to the point that it consumed her. When morning came, Kimberly was being visited by her peers and they gave their condolences, but Kimberly didn't want to accept it. So she began digging a hole that she wouldn't be able to come out of. Kimberly jumped on her phone and began to research witchcraft. She began to search for a way to bring her parents back and Devin. Hannah knocked on the door and came in. She sat next to Kimberly and said, How do you feel? Kimberly replied, Horrible. Our last interaction was me telling them that I hated them and I stormed out of the house. Hannah wrapped her arms around Kimberly and said, This is why we should always have happiness with those that we love. For this exact reason, Kimberly began to cry and hugged Hannah saying i want my parents back hannah couldn't imagine the pain her friend was going through so she comforted her each second that passed it only made kimberly more tempted into doing a spell or worse summoning a demon to do the dirty job more people began to arrive so kimberly had to act natural to avoid suspicion the remainder of the day went all right but when having conversations with people about life it hit hard and kimberly didn't like it night came once again and while everyone was sound asleep, Kimberly was looking for a spell to summon a demon, but she still had doubt in her about going through it with it. The next day, Kimberly was able to go see her parents at the morgue, and she was accompanied by Iris as Hannah had work. When the attendant there led them to the room and unzipped the body bags, that was all she needed to know. She was going to follow through with this plan she had. When they left the morgue, both Iris and Kim parted ways, but Kim went into a witchcraft store to get the stuff that she needed. Upon entering, the store clerk said, I've been expecting you, Kimberly. Kimberly replied, if that's the case, then you know what I need. The store clerk responded, yes, I do know. Then give it to me, said Kimberly. Do beware, Kimberly. Doing such acts as these come with unsuspecting consequences. Kimberly responded, oh yeah, then let me find this out for myself. The store clerk stared into her eyes and said, I see darkness in your future. Are you sure you want to do this? Kimberly replied, give me the damn bag. Don't make me repeat myself. The clerk handed over the bag with the necessary materials. Kimberly checked the bag to see if everything was inside and everything was. Good then she paid and left. Kimberly went back to Hannah's house and hid all the stuff in her own backpack to avoid attention. But since Kimberly was home alone, she then began to think that she, used, she needed to take advantage by setting up some of the materials. She lit candles and placed the pictures of her mom, her dad, and Devin. She began to read a spell in Latin, but before she could finish, a spirit manifested itself. Kimberly saw the spirit and said, wait, you're the store clerk. The spirit said, no, I'm not the clerk. The clerk was in the back. I warned you, but you didn't listen. Kimberly replied, leave me alone. The same way you're leaving your parents and Devin alone, replied the spirit. Kimberly continued reading from the book, and so the spirit gave her something unexpected. Since you want to mess with the dead, then how about you feed from the dead, said the spirit. Kimberly said, huh? And then she got paralyzed. Why can't I move? asked Kimberly. The spirit called on the spirit of the vulture and made it a part of Kimberly. Kimberly screamed, but her screams weren't heard. The vulture entered her body and then she felt back pain and screamed as these black feathered wings grew on her. Her body changed too, but now she could only eat what she could scavenge. That being the dead, Kimberly's stomach began to hurt. She collapsed and said, what did you do to me? Since you want to mess with the forces of life and death, 
then feast on the dead since you won't leave them alone. Kimberly ran to the fridge and ate food but it did not do anything so she flew to a cemetery and there was a burial happening. Kimberly having no choice crashed their ceremony and broke open the coffin. The men that were there tried to fight her but the moment she took out the first bite it satisfied her hunger but it also completed the transformation. Feathers grew all over her body, she grew a beak and her eyes turned that of a silver color. Everyone saw this and began screaming out of fear, but now the vultress was in control. But she was still hungry so she created dead people by impaling her beak through their chests. Fear broke out and panic spread across like wildfire. Vultress knew she couldn't stay in Idaho, well the northern part of, of course. So she spread open her wings and took off into the sky in bare daylight. Her actions was recorded and the video was shared everywhere and it was spreading like wildfire. People began to form little mobs to try and kill Voltress by any means necessary. It was like something out of the older times. People began to sharpen stakes and began making torches and even brought pitchforks. They began to think she might have been a vampire but then vulture wings shut down those ideas. Theorists were starting to think and suggest that she was a demon. From hell but of course that wasn't the case. Hannah and her parents saw the video and recognized that it was Kimberly and they panicked but in order to avoid getting in any trouble they had to throw her under the bus. Hannah in the comments of the video she posted the person in the video used to be my friend and her name is Kimberly Winters. Instead of people hating on Hannah for knowing Kimberly they congratulated her for exposing her identity and not even an hour later it was on every news station possible. The day was becoming night and Kimberly was beginning to get hungry again. So she began to look for another cemetery. Not that long after searching, she spotted one with her enhanced eyesight. So she swooped in to try and grab a bite. At this point, it was dark out and Kimberly began to dig out on graves to begin eating. And so far, everything was good. She was eating and the thought of eating a dead person made her want to throw up but it tasted good for her because of the vulture spirit in her. But what she didn't realize was that there was cameras recording everything. But the night watchmen were viewing the feed and had already called the police. Just when she thought it was over, she began to hear yelling in the distance. But when she turned around, she saw an angry mob walking in her direction. Kimberly began to panic and tried to fly off, but her left foot got stuck in a small hole and she tried to get it unstuck while panicking, but that made it worse. The mob got to her and they were getting ready but to kill her. And in that moment, Kimberly spoke saying, no, please don't kill me, as she covered her face. That's when an older man said, really Kimberly, when you've been eating dead people? Kimberly asked in confusion, wait, how do you know my name? The older man said, your friend Hannah told us. Kimberly began to think to herself, but how? That's when she heard it. I told him because you're a monster. The crowd began to make way as someone began coming to the front. Kimberly recognized the voice but wasn't too sure until she saw the face and to her surprise it was Hannah. Kimberly asked how are you? They tracked you all the way here. I joined in because we can't have a monster in our world. I'm sorry but not sorry said Hannah. As she lit a torch Kimberly had gotten backstabbed but she knew it was going to happen eventually. Hannah said prepare to die as she began to wind her hand back to throw the torch at her. In what felt like time slowed, Kimberly accepted her death as the torches began flying in her direction and just as they got about 6 feet in front of her, the wings went in to block the incoming threats acting as a shield. Kimberly said "What?" that's when she heard the old man say just accept your death the wings went back revealing kimberly and she replied i did i don't know what they did but they did it yeah right replied the old man the reason the wings did that was the vulturous spirit acting in self-defense when the people with the pitchforks were getting ready to charge at her kimberly was morphed against her will feathers grew all over her body her eyes became silver but this time her beak grew longer and sharper her nails became claws and her arms fused with her wings but this time she began to feel a boost in her anger eventually all of her emotions got to her 
Her past actions and her behavior came back at once and it wasn't pretty. The old man sprinted directly at Kimberly, impaling her in the stomach. But the healing factor came in and now she wasn't having it. She pulled the pitchfork out of her and threw it randomly to her right. But at the strength she threw it, it killed two teens at once. When she proceeded to strangle the man to death and then took a bite out of him, people thought that if they attacked all at once that she wouldn't stand a chance. So they did just that. Kimberly began to get stabbed from all angles. A torch was thrown at her, causing her to start burning. In that split second before death, she felt something pass over her. Kimberly closed her eyes and passed out, but was still conscious and could hear as the crowd went from screaming die to downright screaming of pain. Kimberly began to get images flashing in her head of people dying, blood everywhere, fire starting, kids being scared. It felt like a dream, but when Kimberly woke up, she looked around and saw nothing but chaos. The mob was completely gone, all dead, and the cemetery was on fire. The grass had blood all over it, and she then heard the sound of someone trying to breathe and couldn't. Kimberly looked where she was stepping and saw she was standing on Hannah's neck and chest this whole time and now she had taken her last breath she went limp kimberly said i'm so sorry as she hugged her friend's body i'm so stupid i took everybody for granted what have i done yelled kimberly sirens began to approach the area so the only logical thing to do was run kimberly spread her wings open and took off into the nightly abyss kimberly didn't know where to go so she kept flying south Kimberly cried as an unimaginable pain was hurting her heart. Kimberly took everything for granted, her family, her friends, and even love. She rejected it when she had everything. She had it all, but ultimately she preferred to do other things than focus on the one thing she had, love, and now she will be lurking in the shadows. As the nightly sky glowed brightly because of the moon, five stars began to align themselves. Something was coming. Damn, I don't see it. You see it? Settle down, kid. She can't run forever. <laughs>